I want to talk about the covenant of compassion. The covenant that Jesus offers us that is a coming together. It's not just a covenant to include everybody, but it's also a covenant of compassion. And just for a moment, just let me ask you to look at Jesus. Jesus is the compassionate one. And if you read the letter of the Hebrews, you will discover there that the priesthood of Jesus is based on his compassion. He became in everything like we are. He became human and nothing human is alien to him. He is a perfect mediator precisely because he is just like we are. He has a body like we have. He has to grow up like we have. He has to try to learn like we have. He has to struggle like we are. He is dying like we will. Jesus is the compassionate high priest because he was fully human and lived our humanity to the full. There is nothing in you, no pain, no joy, no anguish, no sense of separation that wasn't also in him. He is there with you in every sense. He has taken on your humanity and my humanity so that in the deepest sense, all that you are has been embraced by God. That is the priesthood of Jesus. That is compassion. And the word comes from com, which means with, and passion comes from pathy, which means to suffer. The word compassion means suffering with, being with, crying out with, feeling with, being with. And the name of Jesus is God with us. He suffered with us. He's compassionate. Your passion and my passion, I lived with him. And therefore, Jesus is called the compassionate one. And I want to just for a moment ask you to realize that, that you and I are called to live that compassion in this world. And the structure of the world in which we live is not compassion, but it's competitive. We are living in a competitive society. A society in which our identity is precisely based are not being like others. And in this very mysterious way, or not so mysterious way, actually in a very understanding way, a lot of our sense of self is precisely based on this. You know the Olympics? I have the gold, and you have only the silver. And you have owned the brown. I'm getting in the paper because I'm a minute faster than you are. I am, I am, I am a little better, a little faster, a little more important. I am the difference I make. I am the person who makes a contribution that you cannot make. I am accomplishing something that makes me stick out. 
and be different. And it's precisely where I am different, I experience my identity. I experience my sense of self. I experience who I am. And it's in this competitive world that finally ends up being divided between the rich and the poor and the powerful and the powerless and the hungry and the satisfied in this world where we're constantly dividing things up in a competitive way. It's in this world that God appears as the compassionate one. You are not you when you're different from others, but you are most yourself where you are like others. But that is a, an experience that I, I think you, I, I want you to for a moment try to get into that. The joy, not of being different, but of being the same. The joy of, of belonging to the human race. When, when, I don't know if you ever had an experience that you meet somebody from your hometown. Ah, oh, you, you are from Darien too. You know, you're in California. You're from Darien. I'm from Darien too. Now, do you know her? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. oh wow. Gee, you're excited. You and I are the same. Can you excited? Now, what I want you to be excited and see another person that says, Why are you human too? <laughs> Is that exciting? We both are human. We are from the same planet. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it exciting to be human? And what I want to tell you is that when you live a life of the Spirit, when you live a life of prayer, when you live a life of belonging to God, you will discover the joy of being like others. You will discover the joy of belonging to the human race. I just say it's good to be human. It's good to be. It's good to belong. Uh, Thomas Merton, some of you may have heard of him, he's a monk who wrote a lot and who was quite known by his writing. Spent years and years in a monastery in a way, to be different. And when he came out of the monastery, after 20 years, and he ended up in a big supermarket, just doing some shopping, he suddenly had this experience to say, everybody walks around with a halo around their head. They're all saying, and I'm so glad that I belong to the human family. Suddenly I have the inner eye to see the joy of being human. To feel that. And it's amazing that in our world, compassion has become sort of part of the competition. Years ago, I, I went to visit Senator Humphrey. Some of you might remember that name. And we went to him to talk about compassion. And he didn't know it. So we walked in the office and said, Senator, uh, we, we, he said, what can I do for you guys? And uh, you know, what, what's your problem? What you come to lobby for? I said, well, we just want to know what you think about compassion in politics. And he was totally confused. He was totally confused. And he didn't know what to say. And he had never had anything happen to him so crazy that somebody walked into his office and said, what, is, what about compassion? And he was very confused. And then he, he walked to his desk and pulled out this pencil. And he said, have you seen this pencil? He said, you know, that's competition. It's all wood. And on the very end, there's a little razor. And that's compassion. And when we hurt somebody too much with, with, with the pen, we turn it around and rub it out. In other words, in our society, compassion is only part of the competition. Competition is the basic line. But compassion is something that we have to do once in a while not to make it too bad. 
And Jesus turns all around and says, your true joy, your true, your true fulfillment comes from compassion, from being with people, from suffering with, from being able to say, I am your brother and your sister, and I'm with you. And I, I want you to, to realize that the word care is the same. It's a Celtic word, kara, that is exactly the same word as, comp as compassion. It means to cry out with. And you and I are called to make care and compassion the basis of our life. That's very, very hard. But you know something about it. Because you know somewhere that when you were in pain, those who came to you and stayed with you, even when they couldn't do anything about it, they are your friend. It's not the one who, who can fix you. It's the one who is not afraid to be with you, even when you cannot be healed or cured or changed. And it's hard for us because we want to fix the situation. I want to fix you. I want to help you. I want to cure you. I want to make you different. I want to do something about your situation. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm only saying that finally what is most healing is that someone is going to be there with you even when that person cannot change you. I'm your brother. I'm your sister. I'm holding your hand. I'm listening to you. I'm going to be where you are. We live in a community where nobody is going to change in terms of their handicaps. We only get worse. We have never the satisfaction of a cure. But we are called constantly to be with one another. To be with one another. And to be with one another precisely where it hurts, precisely where it's so different. And I want to tell you a very great mystery that you know but maybe cannot articulate. And that is this. That where you live the compassionate life, sorrow and joy always touch each other. Always. In a competitive world, sorrow and joy are neatly separated. You cannot be joyful when you're sorrowful. You cannot be glad when you're sad. Most hours of our day are sad, so why don't we have one happy hour? <laughs> but the Christian vision and the life of Christ calls us to the truth that precisely where we are together in sorrow, that is the place where joy burst forth. There, precisely there. The last community is a community of people with enormous sorrow. But if you want to see joy, come and visit us. And if you look at the cross and you say that Jesus is the one in whom you put your hope, you declare that that place of immense sorrow is the place from where all joy burst forth. And that is not a beautiful, pious idea about something that happened long ago. That is what you, you can experience every day of your life. If you finally have the freedom to be with a dying person, you might experience a joy that you never had right in the midst of your sorrow. And all human joy somewhere is hidden in our sorrow. It's from there that burst forth light, glory, hope, a new life. And as long as we live a competitive life and we, we, we think that joy means that we are having a victory over another person 
and can claim something that others cannot claim, that joy is being so superficial that it makes us only more anxious because we are afraid to lose it quickly. But where we dare to be together, to care for one another, to, to embrace each other in the knowledge of our mortality and say, yes, brother, you're going to die and I'm going to die and you're going to suffer and I'm going to suffer and I don't know what your life is going to look like and I can fix your marriage and I can fix your relationship with your son and I can make your children change and I can do anything, but I'm your friend, I'm your brother, I'm your sister, I'm with you and don't be afraid to cry. Don't be afraid to sob. Don't be afraid to cry out, I'm with you. And somewhere I know that the God in whom we believe is the God of joy that is manifesting itself right now in our soul. You know, if you care for the poor, it's not a question of having pity and do something good for another person. To care for the poor is so that the poor can give you the joy that you're looking for. Can give you the blessing. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who mourn. It doesn't say blessed are those who console the mourning, but in the, those who mourn, those who are in pain, those who suffer, have a gift for you to give that brings you joy. And I really want to tell you that to be compassionate doesn't mean to, to like suffering. It simply means to be who you are with others who they are. And that's where real healing takes place. And why? Why is that healing? It's healing because it creates community. It's healing because it brings you together, brothers and sisters. It's healing because suddenly we know we are not alone. It's so good to know that I'm not alone. It's so good to know that, that you and I are sharing in the same struggle. It's so good to know that we're making a journey together. It's so good to know that we will die, both and all of us. And that we don't have to be afraid for our deaths, because at Jesus' death, our deaths will be fruitful. Because our final vulnerability is the fact that we're going to die. And that our death is a place where we can give to those whom we leave behind the spirit of love. Jesus says, good for you that I die, because if I die, I can send you my spirit. And we can say that to each other. When I die, I will send you the spirit of love. And so if you're not afraid for my death, and if you're not afraid to look me in the eye in my mortality, then there will be joy coming to you. And you'll be realized. You will realize who you truly are. That we are brothers and sisters. And that we are parents of a generation to come, even through our deaths, and that we bear fruit. And so, dear friends, I, I, I want to say, Jesus is the compassionate Lord who invites you to be compassionate. And it's not a job. It's not hard work. It's, it's making your humanity available to your brothers and sisters. It means being the good shepherd who lays down her life and his life for her or his friends. It means to, to say what I'm living, I'm not just living for myself, I'm living it for you. It means I, my woundedness is not just my problem, but it is a woundedness that can be for your healing. It means that your anguish and your pain is not something that, that is just something to get rid of. Sure, we want you to be cured, but we also want you to live it in solidarity with a human race that is in anguish from generation to generation. I want to claim, to claim that, and to become living Christ for one another, become priests for one another, become mediators for one another, become people who finally say we belong together 
And if we are together, we don't have to be afraid. But we thank you that you brought us together this afternoon and help us to have a heart like your heart. Help us to transform our heart into your heart. Make our heart include every human being. And make our heart a heart that is willing to suffer with others so that we can discover the joy of being brothers and sisters. Strengthen us as we leave this place. And make us people who can be a source of hope in the world. 